Will a blind taste test featuring Pappy Van Winkle and these other weeders give me an existential crisis? Let's find out today on HDD. This bottle is worth more than the last car I owned. So, in front of me are 10 Glencairns of whiskey. Let's start with old number one. A lot of strong caramel notes on the nose. A lot of caramel, tart, like a sharp caramel. And one of these is this Pappy Van Winkle Family Reserve 15 year, which in case you don't already know, is an absolutely legendary, impossible to find, outrageously expensive bourbon that is said to have descended as a gift from the gods, straight from Mount Olympus itself. Let's see how that compares to this. Wow, totally, is that right? Is there a totally different nose here? I hope so. I was worried they're gonna all taste like really, really similar. And in the others are so-called poor man's pappies, whiskeys that carry a similar, or in some cases, identical mash bills to this. And in a few cases, they're even made at the same distillery that can supposedly be compared to this fabulous nectar. Oh, totally different. But what is this? It's got banana elements to it. And this is way more caramel and smoke. These are numbered one through 10. I was not present when they were poured. I don't know what's in each one. Meredith has a chart and I think you can see what's in them. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna taste test all of these and order them as best I can in order of quality and also play find the pappy because if this stuff is worth what it sells for, then it should jump off this line like a bolt of lightning. But here is the catch. I have never tasted Pappy Van Winkle before. I have no idea what it tastes like. I have had one or two of these other, you know, quote, poor man's bottles over the years, but really, specifically, I don't know what I'm looking for as far as tasting profile or notes. This is gonna be hard. This is gonna be really hard. When we did the vodka game, I thought I was setting myself up for something that would be an impossible task. I did not anticipate that here. This is starting to feel like an impossible task already. In the vodka game, I was specifically tasting for what I thought would be the most expensive one, and I was ordering them in that way. This is a little bit different. It's a little bit more subjective except that it shouldn't be if Pappy's really worth what it's worth. You just stick your nose in there, all you get is like nail polish remover. A fair amount of acetone to it in the nose. It's tough, they're all really, these are all pretty good. I'm splitting hairs. Even with that acetone nose, I wouldn't expect to find that on something that was supremely old, but I should say here, that Julian III apparently does his best to keep these prices down. The MSRP is way lower than what this stuff actually sells for. He encourages you to report liquor stores that are marketing the prices up to the Better Business Bureau. But I confess, as I have already, that I did pay top dollar for mine. <laughs> Which makes this, by the way, the most expensive episode of How to Drink ever that we've done. You know those like hard little uh, crunchy banana candies that you used to get and hate as a kid? That has a little bit of that going on it. And an acetone nose. And, yeah, runts, runts. I'm talking about, yeah, the little bananas in the runts, um, amongst other flavors. It is so hot in here, guys. I'm just like sweating like a pig. Do you want to go sit in the car with the air conditioning on? No, I want to roll. Bananas? I want to do this. It's it's appropriate. Like it's I, hot. I'm a cat on a hot tin roof. I should have a hand fan down here so I could be sipping my whiskey. Vanilla. There's a lot of vanilla in the nose on this. Okay, this is number four vanilla and tobacco. Candy note there, like sweet, sweet, sweet. That's, I like that. Oof, shit, that. I'm gonna trust myself and say that's that's a good one. I don't know which one it is, but that's a good one. This'll be like our winner's circle. This is the pappy circle. It just occurred to me that if I'm like, well, this is the best one, and I pick like a $30 whiskey, everybody's gonna be like, you can't trust Greg at all. He has no idea what he's talking about. Personally, I think it means nobody has any idea what they're talking about. In the worlds of Samuel Goldwyn, no one knows nothing. Helix Sleep thought we'd be great partners and sponsored this episode, so thank you, Helix Sleep. Maybe you're an old school back sleeper or a wicked gnarly side sleeper or a bee flopping belly sleeper. I've been working on my own brand of freestyle snoozing where I start out on my back, but actually probably my side. Then I do some weird flips and turns in the night and wake up tangled and confused. I took the Helix Sleep Quiz and they paired me up with a Midnight Lux based on my results. So far I feel like this uh, has really helped me step up my sleep game, grooving in on some deep rims. Now you're asking, Greg, what's Helix Sleep? And I'm glad you asked. Helix is a premium mattress in a box company that makes mattresses to fit your unique needs and preferences based on your body and sleep style. One thing I love about Helix is the mattress comes with a 10 year warranty, which is totally awesome. And 
you get a 100 night sleep trial because they get it. It's kind of scary buying a mattress over the internet that you have not touched or seen in a showroom. No one's given you a high pressure sales pitch, but no big deal because you've got a full three months to test it out risk-free in your own home. And if you don't absolutely love it, they're gonna come back, pick it up, give you a full refund. Sweet. Hey, Sleepy Greg, just interrupting the ad with an update. So it's been about six months since I started sleeping on a Helix and I love it. Uh, I sleep like a log on this thing, totally immovable and mossy. Back to you. Do you love free shipping? Of course you do, we all do. Well, here's the thing, Helix will deliver your mattress for free to your front door anywhere within the US. You just haul that sucker in, pop it open, let it do its thing, and you're in slumber town, baby. I'm betting there's a good chance you have a neck, and if that's the case, you probably love using pillows when you sleep. As such, the good people at Helix have a special offer for HED fans. If you click the link below to pick up a mattress, you're gonna get 200 bucks off your Helix sleep mattress, plus a free pair of pillows. And let me tell you, these are serious pillows. All right, I'm gonna take a nap and hand the reins on this episode back over to a weight grip now. Uh, good night. Okay, so number five, a lot of banana on the nose. A lot of banana. Not even like funky bananas, but like fresh bananas. It's like a lot of baking spice. I feel like numbers four and five are of a very different like character than one through three. These two are pretty great. <laughs> like a warm, kind of put your slippers on and sit by the fire, cozy kind of whiskey glass. That said, they didn't have anything that like, you know, made the top of my brain go light up and tingle and go, what did I just drink? There was just n absolutely nothing wrong with these two. Like I said, I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the God whiskey. Mild notes of vanilla. A little cinnamon baking spice action there. That is a very good whiskey. Damn it! So <laughs> oh shit. Oh my God, I am... I should have sent a poet. I'm not equal to this task. Very mild. I mean... Yeah, even compare, I mean, okay, I'm not crazy. This one is mild. It has a very mild nose and it's caramel. It's good whiskey. That is just so chill. It has got just a very gentle approach um, with a slight like <sighs> caramel and allspice. I think allspice is the word I'm going for here. Hints of cinnamon, peanuts, mostly just the caramel. Uh, that's a contender, man. I think that's my favorite one so far. I'd have to go back through and do a comparative. For now, I'm gonna move this one to the Pappy Circle. I'm pretty into number seven. Putting seven in the Pappy Circle. The vodka was so much easier. It was so much easier because there were such wild swings. It's got some acetone to it. Not enough to be like, whoa, that's, that's swill. I mean, just a little, but you don't find, I don't find it there at all. It has an, an interesting evolution. There is a, a, a twist of peanut. It's got like a banana thing on the front. I don't think it's better than the seven. It's not terrible. It's not bad. None of these have been bad, honestly. I'm not good at this. <laughs> I'm not good at this. Okay, let's move on to number eight. Bananas. It's like the smell of walking past the pool at a hotel. That little too much chlorine in the water smell. Now, now, now that I've put that name on it, that's like all I can smell. A very quiet opening with some peanut in the finish. I keep hearing me say the same notes. This has this much banana or that much. This has this much caramel or that much. This has this much peanut or that. There haven't been any really wide swings where this is just like weird. I mean, like there's been di huge differences, but none of them have been like from a completely different planet. Number nine is pretty one dimensional. It comes in with a short round of all spice and nutmeg kind of thing, and then quickly evolves to peanuts and rounds out to a finish. So in all likelihood, I've had Pappy. One of these was Pappy. I think my favorite is seven, so I'm hoping seven is the Pappy, unless number 10 is about to blow me away. Is that a, that's a little bit of that bourbony bubblegum smell, which is interesting. That's a flavor. I don't know what chemical causes that, but that shows up in some bourbons, and this is the first time I found it in this lineup. Fresh cut grass. This is a twist. Sweet and light. That's a good one. Some vanilla, bubblegum. There's no sharp edges on that. That is very just rounded out. Not overly oaked. Tough to choose. I like 10 a lot. Unless something has just changed in my personal palate and perspective or my palate fatigue is, because I mean, I'm drinking a lot of whiskeys here. I'm not accurate at the moment. That one is different from I think everything else I've tasted so far. All right. Number seven was my absolute favorite. Let's compare that to number 10. Seven. I really like this number seven. I think I'm gonna have to do these again with bigger sips too. I need to be doing a better job of really coating the inside of my mouth. I've been kind of pacing myself maybe 
It's a mistake. She just, she just gets sauced over here. Let's see what I get here. I like it. I wonder if that's larceny too is my favorite. So I'll move that one up the line. Ultimately, this is not the most inspiring, so I'm just gonna leave it down here. Six is good. This, this doesn't look like it, but this is hard work. I mean, I haven't really talked much about color, but this number three is like noticeably darker than the others. This is kind of upsetting my stomach. I'm gonna lie down now. I think that this is the order I like them in. Wait, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. Really? That's not great. It tastes like whiskey. At this point, that's where I'm at. What are you drinking? Wine. One thing I haven't done is I haven't watered any of these yet. With the water, I'm getting bubblegum on number four. I'm moving four down. I think I'm putting six ahead of it, though. I gotta make some choices, you know? I don't know. Okay, number seven. This one's been in the winter circle for a while. Let's see if it still is my fave. As it knows, it reminds me of Old Granddad with the water. Oh, I wonder if it's... That'd be ironic if this is larceny, because I've liked larceny before. I still like that a lot. I really like that a lot. <sighs> yeah, six is so good. I like it I like it a little better. It's tight. It's really close. All right, I can't do this all day. If there is any justice in this world at all, then this is Pappy Van Winkle, and this is Old Fitzgerald. Meredith, are they? No. Damn it! Well, or maybe that's amazing. All right, so this is the Weller Antique 107. The six. Oh. That's good whiskey, I like that. What's the seven? Larceny. No shit. I put a $40 whiskey in the winner's circle. I'm a loser. Damn. I like larceny. I do. I re <laughs> that's crazy. This is the pap poor man pappy. Five is makers. Okay, what's number four? Where did I put the pappy? Holy shit. What a loser am I. Three is Old Fitzgerald. My God, the two most expensive whiskeys here. <laughs> My first impression on the Pappy was that it was something special. And then I got lost in this tasting thing and it just wound up down here. Rarified liquid gold and magic. Will it have a more pronounced effect upon my palate? Will I taste the soul of God? It's very nice. What I can say is like pretty definitive here is that to me, you know, despite doing this for a living, I'm not, I guess, a professional spirits taster. I'm more like you than somebody who's going to grade one of these contests. And by the way, they're never going to invite me now. It did initially make an impression, but overall, taken as a group, it's really hard to detect, not the differences, but that like, this is better. Very, 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 very difficult and extremely subjective. So to that end, I would say, honestly, the Pappy is not worth the hype. This has been Find the Pappy, and I failed. We also did a vodka game. I did pretty good at the vodka game. If you want to check out that one, I'll put up a link in the pinned comment below. You can find me on Instagram at how to drink on Twitter at how to drink. You'll find me on Patreon at patreon.com slash how to drink. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this whole episode and we're going to post the entire thing to Patreon unedited. So you can see the outrageous process, the length of time I spent with this and the difficulty with which the amount I agonized over these. And I'm on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Greg from HTD. I am partnered with Curiata. Curiata can help you if you are one of, I think, 80% of the US population that they service. We will not probably be able to get Pappy on there, but I think some of these other ones, certainly like Larceny, Makers, and Garrison Brothers, I'm sure we can make available through Curiata. If you wanna pick them up and try them for yourselves, check out drink.curiata.com or use the link in the pinned comment below. In the meantime, I'm going to stand here and absorb your hatred for deciding that Pappy isn't that great. It's not that bad, but it isn't ah, great. Why don't you check out these other episodes of How to Drink? You can send your hatred that way too. It's all revenue to me.